What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. Of course, I'm one of your hosts, Snowbike Mike, and today I am joined by my dude, Mr. Paris Lilly. Paris, Happy New Year. Welcome back. It's a brand new year here for the X-Cast, and I know you're a bit under the weather, so I'll keep it pretty brief and easy at the top of the show. How are you doing, my man? Well, Happy New Year to you too, Mike. And I uh, hope you had a good holiday. Uh, and, and to your point, yeah, I, I've just been deathly sick <laughs> since <laughs> Christmas. I'm supposed to be in the studio today, which really bums me out that, that I'm not there. But, uh, you know, I didn't want to get anybody sick. And, you know, I'm just very congested. And I'm, I'm getting better now because I know a lot of people have reached out concerned. But I have not been this sick in well over 10 years. Woo, that's crazy, like, like even my wife, Even my wife, she was like, I have not seen you this sick and so long it's just it's just been crazy like it started off like a cold it's not covid i tested but i I don't know it's like some crazy strain of the flu i I don't know it just really just got me no fun for the holidays and to kick off the new year but i'm happy you're back of course i'm happy you're here because gary witta is out today as well so i had a little flip-flop of my gaming dads you were first out then you came back then gary stepped out so i'm happy one of you is here to start off the year of course i'll keep it simple at the top this is the kind of funny x cast we post each and every thursday at 6 a.m west coast best coast time on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and of course on podcast services around the globe if you love what we do Support us with the Kind of Funny membership over on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games or YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games to get all of our shows ad-free, Rochester just record us live, and get a daily exclusive show. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Delaney Twining, and this week's X-Cast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Paris, to kick off the show, of course, I always love to check in with you and Gary and the whole gang here at Kind of Funny. And what you've been playing? I know we're coming off the holiday break. You have been down for the 10 count. Have you been playing any games while you've been sick on the couch? I've been playing the game of staying alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's funny. I was talking with um, Danny about that earlier today. I have played nothing since Christmas. Um, the only thing that I did do, I, I guess I'll just talk about this really quick, is Xbox and Meta uh, sent over the uh, yes. Quest 3 to me. So I did before I got like really bad, I was testing this out. I was testing out the new Xbox cloud app on that, which was pretty cool. Kind of puts you in like, you know, this big room, this Xbox room, and then you can adjust the screen size. I actually have a video I edited and my voice has just been so terrible. I haven't done a voiceover on it yet, but you know, I jumped in, I played a little bit of Planet, Planet of Lana, I played um, some Halo, played some Wolfenstein and a couple other things I, I put in a video. Oh, Starfield, I was playing as well, just to test it out. Um, I like it, but I don't love it because one thing that I did notice is um, the latency. Yes. The controls, yes. not good. Um, they, they for sure still need to work on that. I love that this is a completely wireless solution. You get your Xbox controller connected via Bluetooth. The concept of it is great, but I still think it needs a little more time in the oven to kind of fix some of the latency issues that it was having because it wasn't, it was a somewhat playable experience, but not something I'm gonna suggest people like, yeah, go, go run out and do. But you know, if you have a MetaQuest 3, you can get the Xbox app on there for free, check it out for yourself. But um, I think it still needs a little bit more time. Yeah, I actually spoke on it last show to Gary and the team that I did that as well, Paris, and I felt the same way. It felt like Halo just had latency problems. It just was not clicking and wasn't as smooth as it should be. But I will say, being able to jump into the cool virtual room that Xbox has and the pass-through with the big screen, I thought that was rad. I did play uh, Jacent on that, and I thought it worked well, right? You're not seeing major latency issues with a game like that, so it was fun enough. I also noticed an uptick and wait times on the Xbox oh. Cloud side. Did oh, yeah. you notice that as well? Yeah, I definitely noticed yeah. that. I mean, at, at one point, it was like over five minutes. Yes, I had a six-minute wait for Halo. Yeah. That's wild, but a very big positive because, of course, if you've got the headset, I think it is cool tech. I think it will continue to get better. I love, like you said, the Bluetooth of the headset to the controller works yeah. flawlessly, super easy to pair and set up, so that was really nice. No cords involved, but... Yeah, playing a game like Halo still on the cloud doesn't quite feel right. It's not there yet, for sure. Not 100%. Now, I will say, just speaking of the MetaQuest 3 and just VR as as a whole, um, outside of testing out the Xbox app, um, 
I did finally play Half Life Alex. Yo. Oh my God. Yo. <laughs> that is the definitive VR experience. If you ever, if you want something to get you into VR, it's going to be Half Life Alex. I totally get the hype on that now. That is a true AAA VR experience. But the other one is Asgard's Wrath yes, 2, which I know, yeah. I know Greg and you guys have uh-huh. even been, been playing in the studio, and I started playing it. I was like, man, this is really cool. Then I got really sick, and I haven't played it since, so, so I'll have to jump back into it uh, here probably the next week or so. But that was also a really cool uh, VR experience as well. Yeah, when you get back to full strength, that was the first VR experience where I said, oh, wow, this is a yeah. must-have. Like, this is, go tell your mom to buy a headset for this kind of game, because it is triple a it's polished it's beautiful yeah. and man is it fun and engaging in that headset it's cool as can be yeah, yeah check absolutely. out asgard draft too if you got a headset or if you just want to look up like a cool vr game i thought that was terrific love that you're playing half-life alex i'm jealous of that that's awesome yeah the, with the the steam link um because you know uh valve updated the steam link vr thing you know on pc so from my pc wireless over the wireless network you can now play steam games on the meta quest oh, three sick okay and yeah I, dude i i could not have bought half-life alex fast enough it was like 20 <laughs> bucks right downloaded it you know hooked it up started playing it instantly i was just like whoa okay this is so freaking cool it is it is if not the best half-life experience one of the best half-life experiences i've ever played for oh. sure I like hearing that. Well, over here on this side, Paris, I've been jumping into Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Of course, that is under embargo, but I can Mm -hmm. share with you that I have a review code. I'm playing it on Xbox, and I look forward to sharing that review with all of you once that game drops here on the Kind of Funny X-Cast. So look forward to that. I've also got the itch for some Riot games. Paris Lily. I've been playing a whole lot of League of Legends and Valorant with the crew. On the Valorant side, I'm getting better. I mean, I'm really bad at those slow, tactical first-person shooters where you can't run all crazy like in Call of Duty and Halo. So I'm getting better checking my corners, walking a little bit slower, being mindful of like the bullet bloom and all that jazz. But I will say, I'm getting pretty good. And Andy Cortez will contest to that because he's my best friend, and he says I'm real good at that game. On the flip side, Paris... I'm playing one of the best games ever made, League of Legends. It's so much fun. I have currently lost 11 out of the 12 games we've played, so I've only won once, but I love League of Legends, especially with that Riot and Game Pass little deal right there because I have all of the champions. It's like 100 plus, and I'm just going through. I'm picking new champions. Maybe that's why I'm losing all the time because I don't know what half the abilities do, but I'll tell you what. League of Legends is the ultimate just 5v5 competitive game I've ever played. I love it so much. That That is awesome. Paris, that's what I've been playing. I'm glad to hear that you got a little game time in. I need you to get back <laughs> yeah, on your feet <laughs> right away because we got a whole lot of awesome games coming out later this month. I mean, you got Yakuza coming. You got Prince of Persia coming. We have a new release, Pal World, the Pokemon game with guns. That's coming out this month. So we got a lot to play, and I'm going to need you there by my side for it. But let's jump into the news Because this week, we started off the year, surprisingly, with a whole lot of energy. And it started with some rumors, and it got into a wild couple discussion days on social media. And then there was some good, thankfully. So, Paris, I'm going to give you the opportunity. I got two news stories that we're going to talk about on today's X-Cast. We can either go with the rumors and how crazy social media got, or we can go with the good, which is that developer underscore direct getting dated and slated for later this month. I would rather end on a positive note. So let's start with the rumors. Let's start with the rumors. I know, Paris, you got something to say about it. I'll give the quick run through of what I saw on social media and what kind of directed the conversation all week long is over the weekend and week, rumors began to dominate the social media conversation about the possibility of a, quote, acclaimed game of the year worthy Xbox exclusive could be available on the Switch and PlayStation. This came from Nate the Hate Podcast. This then grew to that game being identified as possibly Hi-Fi Rush. After that, we then moved the conversation on to how Xbox has considered the idea of bringing other games to competing platforms for a while, possibly eyeing Sea of Thieves as one of those games discussed by Jeff Grubb and Steven Totillo. Of course, this is all rumors. We have not heard official word from Team Xbox or any other developer here. But uh, I'll tell you what, Paris, a lot of people in their feelings, a lot of Xbox customers had a lot to say about the possibility of a 
you know, Hi-Fi Rush or even a Sea of Thieves going to competing platforms. Let's talk about it, Paris. What's up with this? So this is why I always say I, I hate talking about rumors because look at what this rumor has done or these rumors have done with the Xbox community currently, where people are making a lot of assumptions, huge leaps of faith about what's going to happen. So much so that I have seen people going, you know what? I'm done with Xbox. It was a good ride. The 360 year is over. This is it. They're going third party. I hate this. Why are we giving our games away to other platforms? This doesn't make sense. I'm out. And I'm like, Xbox hasn't said any of this at all. They've not officially said anything about this. So I understand discussing the rumor and, and wondering what, you know, the potential of it, but to take a rumor and treat it as fact to the point where you're now getting upset at Xbox that you think they're they're taking away all their exclusive titles from you. That is a huge assumption on a lot of people's parts. So let, let's talk about what the actual rumors are and what their potential impact could be. So, so the first one, Hi-Fi Rush. If Hi-Fi Rush were to go to the Nintendo Switch, I actually think that's a good thing. I don't, I don't view that as a bad thing. I look, look at it as here's a game that Shadow dropped a year ago who was very critically acclaimed. We aren't really calling it a triple A game. It's more of a double A game, but it was, you know, from an Xbox standpoint, definitely one of their, their best games of, of 2023. Now, a year later, you're saying, hey, let's put it on another platform where we think uh, another audience will appreciate it. And you put it on the Nintendo Switch. What they're going to price it at, what the sales would look like, obviously that is TBD because we have no idea. But as an Xbox, cons as, as a person that is invested in the Xbox ecosystem, what's changed for you? Absolutely nothing. All, all Microsoft or Xbox is doing is, which they've done with Ori, which they've done with Cuphead, obviously Minecraft, we know this is about to happen with Call of Duty, they're just putting the game more people's hands. What has their, from Phil Spencer on down, game is for everyone, you know, we, we want to reach as many people as we possibly can. This is a way for them to reach more people with one of their more popular games. But if you're already invested in the Xbox ecosystem, you can still play it on Game Pass, you can still buy it outright, you can still play it on your Series X, your S, PC, Cloud, whatever the case may be, nothing changes for you. So I don't understand the outrage or people being upset about about that now let's look at the second one sea of thieves yep again look at look for all intents and purposes sea of thieves is basically a live service game at this point again you have to purchase it up front but with all the expansions and everything's and new things that they've added to that game over how long has it been out since 2016 2017 six, i believe it's six years is the count yeah it's been out for a long ass time on Xbox and PC. So if they're looking at it at this late stage of that game's life to say, you know what? Maybe we should expand it and put it on more platforms. Maybe we do bring it to the Switch. Maybe we do bring it to PlayStation, right? It's not the craziest thing in the world to say that a Microsoft game is on a PlayStation platform because Minecraft lives there and the, and the various iterations of Minecraft already live there. Same as Nintendo. So here's a multiplayer game where you want to get as many people as you possibly can playing that game. You bring it to that platform again. It, it's not like it's coming day and date. This is the first time it's ever come out. They're not taking anything away from the current Xbox community in that aspect. If anything, they're giving you more people to interact with within the Sea of Thieves community. So again, I do not see this as a bad thing. Now, let's look at the big picture of all of this. Is Xbox going third party? No, <laughs> they're not going third party. Now, if there comes a day where Phil, Phil Spencer or Sarah Bond or Matt Booty come out and go, you know, we've made the decision that we're bringing Gears of War, Halo, Forza, um, I don't know, Avowed, Starfield. Like, in other words, if all of their core major AAA exclusive IPs all of a sudden start showing up on Nintendo and PlayStation platforms, go ahead, get your pitchforks out. I understand the outrage because at that point, why is Xbox even making hardware? just be a third party company, but that's not what they're doing. They're taking 
and again, they've said this in the past, case by case basis with certain titles, things that make sense to show up on another platform, they're putting them on another platform because they're just exposing them to more people. A Fallout 76, an Elder Scrolls Online, now it may potentially a Sea of Thieves, things like that make sense to, you want to put it as many places as you possibly can. You're, I highly doubt you're going to see the Elder Scrolls 6 on a PlayStation. I highly doubt you're going to see the sequel to Starfield on a PlayStation, Gears of War 6, whatever the next Halo is going to be, Forza 9, Forza Horizon 6. You're not going to see these things leave the Xbox ecosystem because you're simply not. That's not what their business model is. But their business model is now with Activision and, and Bethesda in tow and the cloud and mobile. Yes, they want to get as many titles out to more people as they can but that doesn't mean core reason to invest into xbox and want to pick up xbox are the exclusive titles or those major core ip titles that's just simply not going to go away i just don't see it now if i'm wrong i'll be right there side by side with you and go yeah wow what are we doing just stop making xboxes <laughs> but we know they're not going to stop making xboxes and you have to give people an incentive to want to pick up xbox hardware and at the same time what they've done is provide other options that i can play xbox games on my pc i can cloud stream them but that doesn't mean that i'm now going to go play halo on the nintendo switch or i'm going to go play gear six on playstation 5 this is simply not going to happen so i think a lot of this is people f seeing a rumor listening to scuttlebutt and gossip online and letting their imaginations run wild to the point that you have people outraged over nothing i mean you know we'll obviously get into the other part of the news that came out today with the developer direct none of those games are showing up on a playstation or nintendo <laughs> <laughs> so that that's how you have to look at it so i just think this is a whole lot of nothing and it's just funny because i've been sick looking at this i'm like is this real is this really happening am i in a fever dream are people mad this isn't happening and no it's it's not going to happen so I, I i just think you know, people are outraged here for a week or two, but once we really get rolling in 2024 and they see that games are still exclusively coming to the Xbox platform, everything will be fine. Paris, very well said, as always, my guy. And I feel the same way. I echo a lot of what you had to say. And it's a fun one. It's a head scratcher. We start off the new year, 2024, looking ahead to what Team Green and Xbox are going to bring to the video game landscape. As a gamer, I'm excited to play some new games. I'm excited to dive into my backlog. And this was a head scratcher. This was one of those, again, Paris, where a rumor starts to circulate over in the Twitterverse and on social media, and all of a sudden this catches red hot fire and it leads the question again, like you've talked about Paris is should Xbox be getting ahead of this and possibly saying something, you know, I, I sit there and I'd scratch my head going, man, we're going to let this go on for a full week. Right. And thankfully the developer direct news, I think quieted that down pretty yeah. quick, which like was the nice thing. But if they didn't have that, we would have gone for a full week of everyone in their mama on social media screaming that Xbox is going to go third party and I need to sell my Xbox because my Xbox Live account won't mean anything with all of my games in a matter of a year. Because surely if Sea of Thieves, a games as a service, live service game that needs players and has an awesome game to play with so many people, that will lead to probably Gear 6 being on my PlayStation. I should never buy an Xbox again. But right. <laughs> it, it was such a wild moment to see that leap. And we, it just, the ball started rolling so fast, Paris. And it's one of those, I remember you and I talked about this, is should Xbox be getting ahead of that? Is there a proper way on social media to kind of quiet that and like lull that flame down? I think they did. They did a little. I think they knew they had the obviously the dev direct in their back pocket, which would kind of, you know, quiet the storm. But I think they did it with with the official Xbox account. I want to say it was a day or two ago where they kind of put out a tweet where it listed out, you know, 2024 resolutions or something like that. And it was kind of going down the list. First party exclusive, this, that and the others. They were just showing this is what you can expect, you know, from Xbox this year. And obviously people are going to not one like let, 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 let me back up and say this part of the issue is and I, like you said we've had this discussion a lot about does xbox need to get out in front of certain things or whatever this is one where i didn't i don't think they necessarily needed to because i think it's just the internet and i just think you have a 
vocal minority of the internet that gets very loud about things and will blow things out of proportion when officially they've not said anything either way. So you can't every time a vocal minority on the internet gets very loud and makes a wild assumption that you have to get out in front of it. Now, clearly if IGN and GameSpot and Forbes and like all these gaming sites, if we kept that conversation, we went on here on this platform, kept that conversation going for an extended time, I think that might have forced their hand more than anything because now we're helping to stoke the flames of these rumors by continuing to talk about it and continuing to speculate. Because trust me, if they didn't have that dev direct and we still came on here today, I was going to go, this is a bunch of nonsense. It's not going to happen, <laughs> you know, and that would have been the last time I would have wanted to talk about it and we would have moved on. But um, yeah, I, I think this one will, 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 will die, you know, a nice quiet death. And, you know, we'll, we'll go into this dev direct and we'll start talking about some of those titles and speculate, obviously, unless they give us release dates on when these games are coming out and we'll just move forward into 2024. I agree with that, Paris. Yeah, I, I think wholeheartedly that tweet today about the xbox developer direct saved all of this conversation quickly yeah. quieted it down uh just like you said if sea of thieves goes multi-plat i have no problem with that as someone who loves live service games and i've seen so many of them come and go due to player bases just not being there a game that is six years old on the xbox ecosystem that needs more players that needs to continue to grow and shine I have no problem with that ever. If they came out next tomorrow, next year and said that, I would just nod my head and say, that's fine with me. Let's keep it going. What do you got, Paris? Yeah. No, I completely agree with what you're going to say. And I just want to say one last thing on this, because I think one of the common threads that I saw is Xbox is taking away my reasonings for wanting an Xbox. What's the point of wanting a, mm. an Xbox if all the games are going to show up somewhere else? And like I said, that's not going to happen. But I just think part of, part of the thing that I see with people with this, it, it, it doesn't need to be, it's not a competition for us. Sure, in the in the in the grand scheme of business, sure they're competing for our for our dollars and the revenue and everything that goes with that. But at the end of the day, if you're a gamer, if you love playing with your friends, if I like playing my friends on Xbox, I'm gonna keep playing with my friends on Xbox because that's where my friends are, and the and the games are still clearly going to be there even if they show up somewhere else. So that's what I just personally don't understand when people get so upset about that. I'll give you a classic example of this destiny. I played destiny probably good. It was obviously until it came out on PC. So I played destiny until 2017, 2018 exclusively on PlayStation because that's where my friends were that played it. Even though I could have played it on Xbox, it didn't matter. I want to play where my friends are. And I just think when, when we think about gaming and the collaboration, all that, we're in a different world now with, with cross play and things of that nature. So it's a little different, but at the end of the day, you, you go where your friends are. You go where the people you're most comfortable gaming with. I do not care if a game that I love to play shows up somewhere else so someone else can get to play it too. Who cares? I, I, I will never understand people that get so upset about that. I worry about me, my friends, and my wallet. That's it. <laughs> I don't worry about anything else because if a game shows up somewhere else for somebody to be able to play it, good. They get to enjoy it too. That, that's how I will always look at it. The business side of it, the res revenue side of it, that's not my concern. My concern is being a gamer and enjoying the games that I want to play where I want to play them, period. That's it. Well said. And of course, these are all still just rumors. One day, maybe we'll get an official release from Xbox. But until then, that's the thoughts over here on the Kind of Funny X-Cast with Paris and Mike. Let's go and switch gears to something fun and talk about the upcoming Xbox developer underscore direct right after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. You can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace and it can give you the tools you need to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. 
If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made by visiting betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash kind of funny. Betterhelp.com slash kind of funny. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's been a full year since the debut of the first Xbox developer underscore direct. And now we have official news from Team Xbox that it's returning for the second time on January 18th. I'll give you the details right now, and then we'll talk all about it and the excitement that you should have for this awesome little showcase. Your details, the Xbox developer underscore direct is set to air on January 18th at 12 p.m. West Coast, Best Coast time. Uh, of course, the game's covered. Indiana Jones, Avowed, Aura History Untold, and Sanua Saga Hellblade 2. So get ready for that. And of course, after the developer underscore direct, ZeniMax Online Studios will host the Elder Scrolls Online 2024 Global Reveal. The team will reveal the game's next major chapter, including a new zone, storyline, and other major features. Paris, we're back again for another one with Xbox, the developer underscore direct. Let's talk about the excitement for, of course, more messaging. Another chance for Xbox to get ahead of it here to start off 2024. Uh, what did you think of last year's? And are you excited to see what they can improve upon this year? Yeah, I loved last year's. And um, I'm excited that this one is coming back, you know, virtually around the same time again. You know, um, we, we obviously had the huge shadow drop surprise of Hi-Fi Rush last year. I've kept my expectations in check that I'm not expecting another shadow <laughs> drop, but it would be nice if there was one. But the big thing that I'm taking out of this one is Indiana Jones. Yes. I did not wow. have that on my bingo card. I was thinking, oh, maybe at the June showcase, we'll, they'll talk about it a little bit or something. We get another reveal. But I was not expecting in January of 2024, they're going to have a full-on de developer direct with Machine Games to show us, what did they say, 10 minutes? 10 minutes uh, of game of and developer insights. Yeah. Mm. Mike, what are people going to be screaming from the rooftops tomorrow? <laughs> On January 18th, we are going to see more than 10 minutes of game and developer insights, including details about the game's setting and story, how fans will actually play as Indy, additional details from his next globe-trotting adventure, and the premiere of the first gameplay trailer. So like you said, Paris, I, you and I both, I think the last time we talked, I said maybe in the summer we'll see Todd and the team show something off, but they're ready to rock and roll, and it will be really cool I like the developer underscore direct because like you and I talked about, I want to see the human beings, the hardworking men and women out there that mm -hmm. are making the games that I love. And I love going behind the curtain, right? Show me the cool studio with all the big windows and cool game stuff. Show me the people who are making these games and have them talk and showcase the things that they love. And I think, you know, going to machine games is going to be pretty special. And will we, is it first person? Is it third person? I think we're definitely going to get the answer for that yep. one. But I'm high on the indie train right now because I talked a lot of smack about indie, and then I watched some Indiana Jones, and I'm like, I'm back now. I'm back on it right now. Oh, yeah. before I'm we back skip on over it. that, before <laughs> what indie movie did you watch though, Mike? I watched the newest one, The Dollar Destiny. And you know what? You hit that theme, Paris and Barrett. That theme comes on, and it's like, you know what? I can't argue that. I'm in. I'm I in. I'm back in. I, I have to say, so it's funny you say that because mm -hmm. I, I did watch that over the holiday break. And I went in with zero expectation. I got to tell you, that first 20 minutes, <laughs> good, good, good time. It. Now, <laughs> after that, your mileage may vary. It, Mike, I, go I, back and watch at least the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is yep. the first one. And then um, Temple of Doom is fine. And then you go to uh, Last Crusade, Last Crusade, which fucking yeah. kicks ass, man. Yeah. When that jabroni drank out of that goblet and he started freaking out, I have nightmares still to this day about that. But yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see this, Paris, because you yeah. know this is my, I, I'm hoping for another Uncharted-like game, right? I love Tomb Raider. I grew up with that. I love the Uncharted series. I am looking for an awesome adventure that's globetrotting, that's really fun, you know, kind of third person. I'm hoping for gameplay that's reminiscent of Tomb Raider and Uncharted. That's what I want to see out of this. No, no, completely agree on, on all of that. And I, I, I thought the key phrasing is 
how you'll get to play indie. So they clearly understand that people are very curious. Is this third person? Is it first person? Is it a combination of both? Yes. I'm leaning towards that. I think we're going to get some third person and first person elements in this game. Um, it's machine games. I, it, like it was funny. I had someone um, on on social media like over the break because I was talking about playing Wolfenstein, and he replied to me, "Why do you always play Wolfenstein?" It's because I love Wolfenstein. Because <laughs> machine games it kicks ass at so you, get to punch Nazis in the face. It's awesome. So for them to be able to make Indiana Jones game, I mean, I think they're they're pr- like the perfect developer for it. So I'm I'm very excited to see how this is going to come together. But Mike, I got a question for you. Lay it on me. And this has kind of been the back and forth speculation that I have seen since since the Dev Direct announcement. Is this a 2024 title? Because I think it's a 2024 title. You took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to ask you that. The end of this says, and the premiere of the first gameplay trailer. And that leads me to believe, Paris, that we're going to have a good marketing run up to this in mm-hmm. the fall. I think this yeah. is a end of the year 2024 title where we're going to see this. Here in January, we're going to get a nice, more uh, bigger beat, maybe with the date in June at the big Xbox and Bethesda showcase. And we're going to be playing this game at the end of the year. I truly think that this is either on track for the final three months or the beginning of next year. But this could be a 2024 game. This feels like a September, October game to me. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Obviously, you know, unless there's a delay or something, but I think on track wise i think september october feels right and like you're saying i think june showcase you get another you get another trailer there i I mean it's one of those pairs we always we play the fun game of when will the dominoes drop Mm -hmm. hey matt booty said one big game a quarter right and we started to look at it at the end of last year of like okay well what can we expect in 2024 and you started to put the pins up going well they're missing just a couple of pieces here to round that out and if Indy is set to be there, you start to really fill in this calendar pretty quick, which I'm excited about from the first party slate. I'll say this, and we can dive into it more as we go into the other games in the Dev Direct. I think 2024 is the year they're hitting that one one game a quarter. I think great. this is it. I, I mean, Paris, it feels like it is. I think last year we were getting towards that, right? Last year we were tracking yeah. towards that. We had a couple of stumbles, but like, I think if we can hit that once a quarter alongside Game Pass with some great second party and third party like combinations yep. here, yep. Xbox starts to fire and it seems like like here's the vision of what we wanted and it's moving. Let's talk about another game, Avowed, coming from Obsidian. They share they say that they will share the first deep dive into the gameplay experience fans can expect from Avowed. So we saw some teases, I believe, last summer. Uh, yep. of gameplay from this, you know, coming from the outer worlds and what they did, of course, everybody will always bring up obsidian and fallout new Vegas and how much we love that. But you know, the idea of going into that kind of fantasy world with obsidian again, I'm in, I am kind of hesitant on this, but I, I was hesitant on outer worlds. And then when I played it, I loved that smaller experience. I love what they did with that big Western RPG that we know and love from Bethesda and putting their own flair on it. So you know what? You got me, and I I, I do want to see more. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, same. I want to see more because obviously there has been a shift in what what the game's going to be from when from the initial reveal back in 2020. So I think this deep dive is definitely needed. You know, to kind of set expectations and maybe put some minds at ease of what a vow it's going to be. Um, I, you know, I've I've said a million times on this show. I think Obsidian, you know, is probably one of the most important acquisitions that Xbox has made in their history. Um, I'm just a huge fan of of the games that they put out over the past decade. So, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to Avowed. Um, I'm I'm hoping that they really knock this out of the park, and you know, we'll we'll find out more at this Dev Direct. Team has a solid track record, right? We we continue to bring up teams that just have a solid track record. Mm-hmm. Machine games. We're looking at Obsidian now. Like you got some teams that have been cooking up and really been performing well for Xbox and the gaming world itself. Uh, I'm excited to see what they do, and I, I'm always going. I'm always gung ho for some more. You know, big beautiful fantasy RPGs. Because coming off of Starfield, you know Bethesda. They they know me so well. I'm into that. So I'll take this. I'm excited. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what else we got. Let's talk about another fun one. That's like kind of my wheelhouse, but not really. 
are a history untold. Oxide Games, a studio founded by veterans of the strategy genre and the creators behind the classic strategy titles like Civ Five, as they unveil the exclusive new gameplay and share more details about the inspiration, key features, and road ahead for their upcoming historical grand strategy game. Paris, this one I'm looking for some gameplay to tell me if I, as a novice strategy game player, yeah. will vibe with this and a date. Because the positive thing about this is this studio now has the Xbox Game Pass behind them that's going to push this title in to people like me who would say, I don't play Civ Civilization yeah. games. I don't want to try an RTS game like Age of Empires. No, no. Now with Game Pass, I can say, you know what? I'm going to give you a couple of tries. Let's see if I vibe with it. Yeah, and I and I think that you know we've said you know a million times is is the beauty of Game Pass where if you're not a hundred percent sure about this type of genre, you can at least go give it a shot. Yeah, and maybe this this Dev Direct you know can give some more insight into that and maybe take away some of that intimidation factor for some people stepping into a game like this. But uh, yeah, I definitely want to check it out. I mean, it lo it looks interesting. I can see a lot of sleepless nights <laughs> playing mm. a game like this. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, Paris, I just came off of a solid weekend of nothing but Age of Empires 2 eSports. Yeah. And I was having so much fun watching those guys absolutely dominate that I was like, you know what? I'm in the mood for another strategy game. And, I mean, you talk about a team from, you know, teams of Civilization Five. Any game in the Civ genre, you know that team is really strong and knows mm -hmm. what they're doing here. Where do you think... You know, as we start to put these pieces together, I know we'll finish with Hellblade, but we're talking about these big four. Do you have any idea of maybe Q1, Q2, Q3? Where do you think these games are going to fall just for fun? Let's play that game. So so interesting enough, I have a game that I think is going to come in Q1 that is not a part of this Dev Direct. Oh, okay. And we'll talk about that at the end. This one, Aura feels like a Q2 game to me. Okay, okay maybe q3 it might be something hey let's put it out over the summer i, I could see q2 q3 that oh hellblade 2 is q4 i'm, I'm just gonna put that yep. out there now okay. i think okay. hellblade i think hellblade and indiana jones are both q4 games um about i have no idea it's interesting because you know you hear whisper here whisper there i hear hey it might be the first half of the year i hear man it might not even make it in 2024 i've heard all kind of stuff about avowed so i'm that one i'm just not sure on i could see avowed maybe maybe that's one you drop in the, in a may time frame before okay. the june showcase potentially we'll like see that. obviously but that that one's probably the biggest mystery to me is avowed I'm, I'm going to play the game just because we got four in front of us and I'm going to put my eyes over my, I'm going to put my hand over my eyes and just throw darts at it. I'm going to say Aura secret stealth drop that day. Hey, early access. Oh. You can play it right now. And then I'm going to steal from Bander SN who's in the live chat watching with us right now. I'm going to say Avowed's in May. That puts Hellblade Q3, Indiana Jones Q4. Out of the four, just for fun, out of the no. four. That's where we go. That's how we track with that. Let's go on to the final one, of course. Sanua Saga, Hellblade 2, Ninja Theory will take us behind the scenes at their studio in Cambridge to give us some insights on how they are crafting Sanua Saga, Hellblade 2. I mean, if you are interested in game design, if you're interested in game development, Ninja Theory is the studio to check out and see all the incredible things that they're doing inside the video game world and the chance to go behind the scenes and just even hear them talk about what they're doing and creating. I mean, that's what I want this developer underscore direct to be all about. Give them 30 minutes and let's just go crazy on all the mocap, the facial animations, what they're doing with the game design. You can, they can talk all day. I'll sit there and watch it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> this is why I didn't come to the studio. I'm like literally coughing and losing my voice again. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I mean, this, we're at that point now with, with Hellblade 2. And I you know I've said this a million times. That is the first thing that we ever saw for this generation. Yep. I just want to get at least a range of when this game is coming out. You don't have to commit to an exact day mm. and month. But can you just say holiday 2024 or something? <laughs> that, that's all I want to see. Okay, okay. You want a window. This point, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen enough. I want to play this game. I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. So you don't need to sell me on it at all other than let me know when I can anticipate being able to actually play it. So 
like I said before, I'm expecting it Q4-ish. I, I think this could be, again, another October, November type release game for them. This may wind up being kind of their flagship game for 2024, you know, kind of similar to the way Starfield was uh, last year for them. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm looking forward to whatever we're going to see in this Dev Direct. I mean, because the, the more I see it, the more I'm, yeah, let me play it. So, again, just just say holiday 2024. How about this, Paris? How about this yeah. instead? We do another live performance of another song, and then no. we give you we give you no release <laughs> nothing. window. We give you nothing. I, it is interesting, Paris and Barrett, right there that you bring up of like, here we are again with this game. This must be like a, attempt number five at showing this off. We have seen this a lot, is right, Paris, since the beginning. And you know, it's one of those. Uh, I said it last time after the game awards. I said, you know what? With this game, I, I'm now done pressing the issue of give me a date, give me a date. Do whatever you got to do. Make the game. When it comes out, I'll be excited and ready. But it is interesting. We come off the Game Awards where they said 2024. Like you said, Paris, do we close that window a little bit more and start to give you six months or a season or some sort of window of like, hey, this is it. Because, man, we're coming back out again. And you have to assume if it's not in this first six months, I'm sure Xbox would love another marketing beat at the Summer Game Showcase in June. So that means we're going to see it again with this game. Here, here's another reason why I would love to see them at least put a, a tighter window on when it's coming. I don't need this at the June showcase. I don't take that slot. Show yeah, me, but you're going to get it. Dark. Right? Show me Joanna Dark. I don't need to see this. I'm good. You know what I mean? Because we, we've seen it enough I feel that. At, at this point to where if it does show up in June, which again, it probably will. 30 second clip with an actual release date and just yeah. keep it pushing. That, that's it. I don't need you to show me more in-depth gameplay. I don't need nothing else after this. After what we get on the 18th, that should be the last in-depth look that we get at Hellblade 2. At that point, just give me a release date and we're good to go. How how mega would it be if they dropped this as a shadow drop? That would be probably one of the biggest things in gaming history. If, if it was like, hey, Xbox developer underscore direct, and then bang, Hellblade 2, here it is. Yeah. That'd be nuts. Yeah. That would be a wild mm -hmm. now, one. You're crazy, I, I do want to warn. I do want to warn of one thing because I had I had multiple people last year, um, you know, at, at Bethesda even more specifically, tell me how hard it is to do a shadow drop. Yes, and of do course. not hold your breath for more <laughs> shadow drops because that's just how hard it is to do it. Um, so that's why I'm like assuming we're not getting anything this time. But man, if they were to sneak something in, that would be really cool. Yeah, this is one where, you know, I come into these now excited to learn more about the development teams. I think mm -hmm. you and I have talked about it so much ever since Inside Xbox has gone its way, right? Having that kind of, you know, wording and showcasing of all of these talented developers around the globe and all of these studios that is under the Microsoft umbrella. I want to see more about them. I want to learn more about them. I think it is big for the kids out there as well, the youth to see all these people yep. see these developers and go man i'd like a job in that i would like to do that how do i do that right and i think this is one of those steps where you show it to a wider audience and you get people inspired to possibly want to pursue a career in this and we keep the future going because man oh man if i saw this back in 1999 to 2005 when i was a kid i would be like man what do i got to do to drop everything yeah. and go do this this would be <laughs> dope you know so yeah i'm coming out of Hey, let's see behind the scenes as opposed to give me the big flashy announcements, right? I I saw some people on Twitter, Paris. You know, when you look at the cool whiteboard that they got for the image to promote it, there is a blank middle space there. Do you think we get a fifth announcement somewhere in here? Do you think they have something special to possibly put in here? It would not surprise me. I mean, and and to bring this full circle back to what we were talking about before. Maybe, maybe that is something Hi-Fi Rush related or something. Who, who, who? I mean, again, who knows? We'll, we'll obviously see on the 18th. But I, I will say that is knock on wood. Nothing's leaked. Yes. So hopefully, if there is a surprise, that does not leak either. So we can all at the same time be super surprised by it. Because look, I think a lot of us halfway kind of sort of knew hi-fi rush was coming last year unfortunately due to leaks i don't want to know that this time don't tell me nothing just let me find out on the Man, 18th you know what paris is right we were like i think we were like 24 hours maybe 48 before like grub and them started to like tease a little bit and you're like <laughs> all right well something's gonna happen we were so close to that so we will see mark your calendars of course that will be 
2024's Xbox developer underscore direct returning January 18th. Go check out the times in your area, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, I got one. I got one. And, th- and this happened uh, over, over the holiday break, so we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. What if Fifth Square was Banjo-Kazooie? Because I don't know if you saw Mike, Phil Spencer was talking directly to me oh. over the holidays. He's talking that to he you. was like, he said, Paris, I hear you. He said that by Banjo. He you sure say, that wasn't I, a fever dream? No, no, no. Yeah, he said I'm Paris. Say, yeah. He said Paris. I was saying that's no, probably was like a, a, No, yeah. it was so funny when, you know, when that came out and he was saying, you know, Banjo fans, I hear you, or however he said it. I got tagged so many times <laughs> on that. Uh, it, it was it was hilarious. I, I was like, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Speaking of that, and and to bring this back to the full conversation. Speaking of banjo, so obviously they're hyper aware, you know, of banjo, of and course. I would expect at some point in the future we're gonna get a banjo kazooie game from Xbox Game Studios. Wouldn't shock me if it showed up on the Switch too. Okay. Yeah, okay. Why not? Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, I no mean it started as a Nintendo game. There's clearly an audience there. They've already done collaboration with Nintendo with the Banjo Kazooie character characters. Why not? Do we still see the heat on social media? Let's yes. say you and I come out. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Mike and Paris with Xbox. We're pleased to announce Banjo and Kazooie coming to Xbox and Switch 2. You think people start losing it again? Yes. Oh my god. They will have some fun. What, hey, hey, People whatever. Have some fun. I got banjo. That's all I know. That's all I care about. Have a good time, y'all. Uh, <laughs> Paris. On that note, let's go through. Give me, give me two more games like Banjo that should re-release or they should make new ones of. I'll, I'll start. Fusion Frenzy. Let's find mm-hmm. an on the couch slash online multiplayer party game mode to come back and really bring us all together. I think that's been sitting in the vault far too long. There's got to be a way where you can team up with some fun developers and make something cool, right? You got the team over there making Overcooked 1 and 2, and fantastic. They're making Moving Out, fantastic. We got to get Fusion Frenzy back on the board. Give me another one I, you want to see. I like that. I, this is one I've been beating the drum for for a long time, too. Cameo. Oh. Launch, it was a 360 launch. Cameo. I, yep. I, I would love to see them revisit that and and try it again because, you know, what they were trying to do from a technology standpoint at that time was kind of primitive. So imagine now being able to do that, having all those characters on the screen, being able to change into all the different animals and stuff. Like, I would love to see see them try that again. And that's a great one right there, Paris. Gosh, there's some great ones in the vault, and we hope to see some more return. Let's talk about what's coming your way on Xbox Game Pass. Here's your update to start off the brand new year for 2024. To kick it off out now, you have Close to the Sun on Cloud Console and PC, Hell Let Loose on Cloud PC, and Xbox Series X and S. If you're looking for a fun first-person shooter with your friends, the hyper-realistic, oh my gosh, this game is too difficult because somebody's shooting me from a thousand yards away, this is the game for you, and I'll tell you what, I enjoy it a lot. Assassin's Creed Valhalla makes its way onto Cloud Console and PC. That's a big get right there. I'll tell some, you what. Some say that's a top three Assassin's Creed game. Bear, it's my expert. He would tell you right. <laughs> uh, Figment is out now on cloud, console, and PC. Coming your way January 11th. Super Mega Baseball 4 on cloud, console, PC. I highly recommend this. I think it's a great baseball sim. It's fun for the family. It gives me old school um, backyard baseball vibes where you have the players, but also the actual MLB players. They signed a big license to get a lot of veteran names on this. So you're actually going to see some cool MLB teams and names on this. So check that out. Uh, We Happy Few comes to cloud console and PC. Very interesting. Paris coming from a studio that they own now, uh, uh, finally out here. Maybe people will play it before uh, the next big title coming from Compulsion Games. That's kind of cool right there. Which I, th- which I think might come in 2024, by the way. Get out of it. You think South of Midnight will come 2024? Uh-huh. I do. By the way, oh, because I forgot to say it. The Q1 game that I think is, is, is Towerborn. Okay, Towerborn. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, about, what about Microsoft Flight Sim 2024? Yeah, well, oh, come yeah. on, hey, baby. Hey, hey, hey. As, <laughs> as the official face of Flight Sim, yes. uh, yeah, I, I think that might be coming in 2024 as well. Um, Paris, really quick, uh, oh, on, yeah. on Flight Sim, me and my buddies had a great one. We would love for you to bring to your friends over there, okay? Because you know we're all about jobs in this one, and we're going to do yeah. cool jobs in the air. We just had a great bowl season, 
You know what I mean? A lot of great college football, and the flyovers whoa, are a whoa. big so, pastime. Some of us did. <laughs> some of us. <laughs> oh, man, that was bad. Go we won't knows. talk about that. But I will say this. The flyover, a big American pastime during the national yeah. anthem, I think that would be wicked dope to figure out as a cool job slash minigame in that to time the plane perfectly over the stadium and get, like, the shots down. Hey, Microsoft Flight Sim, let's get that cooking. Let's get, Let's figure that out right away. What do you got for me? We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a game that you you had a game you're going to bring up? Um. Well, now I think I'm forgetting what I was going to say exactly. But you know, I talked about Towerborn. But then when you think about this year, other games that aren't Xbox Game Studios, but yep. they're coming day one to Xbox on Game Pass replaced should be this year yes which i've highly been anticipating and stalker 2 stalker that's two. another one as well it's like when you start adding up what they're going to have the combination of stuff from their internal studios the partnerships that they have things come to game pass i mean 2024 is just is really looking stacked for xbox it really is it's looking like a good one i saw a couple of people out on social media start to put together the big list of you know what to expect what to see i'm trying to Pull it up here, but that's a great pull with Towerborn and, of course, Stalker 2 replaced as well. It's a great pull. I know you've been dying for that game, Paris. I cannot wait oh, yeah. to see that in its final form. It's going to be so much fun. Let's see if I can pull it up fast enough. I don't see it. Oh, here we go. What else do we got here that we might be missing? Somebody wrote Forza Horizon 6. No way. No way. I don't think so. Absolutely I don't think not so. right there. That that Because you have to imagine at this point, playground is i don't want to say all hands on deck for fable but probably damn near all hands on deck for fable right now yeah. that i think if they had a, 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 a multiple teams going working on horizon we probably would have heard it by now um and not to mention you just came out with the main mainline forza you probably want to give that some time some to breathe, time before, to you, breathe. Yeah. yeah before you drop a horizon out so maybe 2025 for horizon six but i doubt this year how about the elder scrolls oblivion remaster what do you think? See, that's that's another one that's been rumored as well. Would would not shock me. That would all. be sweet. How about mm -hmm. uh, Age of Mythology? I don't know if that's up your up your uh, list over there, but I, I want to see that game. I don't know if it's this year, but I am interested in trying that. I'm Hit thinking with Aura coming out this year, you probably don't want to have both out at the same time. Okay, I like that. Or in the same year, I should say. And then finally, Paris, you know I've been dying for it, and I don't know if it's real or not anymore. What's up with Project Tatanka and that Halo Battle Royale? Like, is this real? Is this real, Paris? I what are heard, we doing? What are we doing? I heard, since, since we're talking rumors, and I, no matter all, know nothing. I'm just going by what I see on Reddit. Okay. That's been canceled. Oh. And now they're working on something else. Because if you remember, I had the interview with Brian Gerard, and Brian Gerard, you know, it was pretty... Pretty straightforward saying that, yeah, you know, the future of Halo, they, you know, don't expect anything anytime soon. But I got a feeling instead of whatever Project Tanaka, Tatanka, or whatever it was supposed to be, I think it is potentially morphed into just a, a full on new Halo game. That That's just my guess. I don't know nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep my eyes on that because I thought that would bring some new life into that. I do still, I will beat the drum on story DLC. I, I am surprised at the way that this team is going about that. I thought that would be a killer idea, um, but it's in a good place right now. I will say I have fun playing Halo. It, it's better. Yeah. It's better. It's all that matters. I mean, I know we're now we're talking more speculation stuff. Do you think we at least get the gears announcement this year? Gear six. Do you think, yeah, do you think they at least uh, uh, make it official? That, yeah, this, this summer you make it official. This yeah. summer it's a big ten pull title. Forza Horizons out the way. Halo Infinite that's out the way. You got to assume there's nothing Halo related, nothing Forza related. So yeah, you bring out gears, even if it's just the teaser trailer. That's enough. If it's a larger trailer to set the tone, that's great. But I don't expect it 2024. But I do expect us to start moving towards, hey, let's put up another big tent pole because you got to think yep. you got Fable in the mix. Of course, you know, you have the end of Star, you know, Starfield's just beginning, but like Starfield, the cycle is kind of over now. So we move into Elder Scrolls, but that's so far away. So where are the tent poles that I'm putting up that was going to get people excited? It's got to be Gears. Well, well, there's another one that I, I'll put cash money down that we we see it this year. We're going to see it. We're going to see gameplay this year. They're showing Joanna Dark. There's no freaking way. We don't see Joanna Dark this year. We have to. I, I, 
I would expect June showcase, but it's got to be Joanna Dark's got to be this year. Man, that's crazy because I was going to say to you is I would expect State of Decay 3 over Joanna Dark. Both of them have had issues, but I would throw yeah. a dart at State of Decay 3 over Joanna Dark anytime soon. Or why not both? <laughs> Man, Paris. Why not both? We got a whole lot I mean, of fun. I mean, this year. And, and, oh, and that was the other thing that came out of all of uh, what, you know, with the Dev Direct announcement. They ain't talking about Activision Blizzard yet. Nope, they said. Let, let's hey. not even forget that. That's still mm -hmm. to come, which another, since we're kind of doing predictions now, I guess. Um, I think you get something before June, its own separate thing, Activision Blizzard, to kind of, here's our plans for Activision Blizzard. Here's the games on Game Pass, et cetera. March -ish, a March, April timeframe. That's my guess. That That's would, what I think. That would make for a great calendar year that you continue to pack in, right? We start off yep. in January with the developer underscore direct. We move into that Activision roundtable. Hey, welcome the teams. Here's who are the faces that you're going to see and what you can expect. Here's the games. I would love some wording on subscription services like World of Warcraft and how we're going to handle that, of course. There's a lot of messaging. We probably have to get out there. I'd love that in the spring, like you said. Summer, June showcase. We're hitting that. Gamescom, Tokyo Game Show, the Game Awards. I mean, this is a full stacked year for Xbox to continue to put messaging out there, Paris. I like I mean, that idea. I mean, when you, when you really think about it, because now that we are past all the acquisitions, I just called 2023 the acquisition year. <laughs> now that we're past all that, they got 30 plus studios. I mean, they have a lot of con 30 plus studios, not to mention the other partner studios that they're working with around the globe with Xbox, you know, game publishing. I mean, the, the news cycle should always there's Xbox should always be talking about something every quarter because they should have that much to be talking about at this point in time. So, yeah, I really do think this is the year that we're, we're going to start seeing that news cycle ramp back up. I think it was with 2021 where they constantly had stuff in the news. I think we're back to that again, where they're constantly going to start be talking about things that they're either working on, new announcements, this game's launching, big all these things because they have that much content now, which is pretty exciting. Close your eyes, Paris. I got, I got a vision. You ready for this? I'm, I'm cooking right now, okay? <laughs> I got a vision. 30-plus studios. How are we going to show them, highlight them? Once a quarter, we send two incredible human beings, one Paris Lilly and Jules Harding, to each studio. They interview the devs. They showcase, they talk about where they're at, what they're doing, what they're cooking up, and we just make it a great web series. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking that's a great way to get people out there and involved. I'm open my eyes right now. <laughs> Tina. The Tina, dream. I, I volunteer. Let's <laughs> get the, let's it. get, I have a vision. Let's get it going. Yeah. <laughs> but to your point, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they have the capabilities of being able to do a lot of spotlights like that. Now, obviously, this Dev Direct, you know, showcases how they're able to put that format together. They got, you know, the internal Xbox podcast to be able to kind of bring devs on, yep. talk about various things, show off new services, all, like all this stuff. Not to mention, from a services standpoint, I think they're, aren't they overhauling the achievement system this year? I think I heard some rumor about that or whatever. But there's a lot that's going on at Xbox that I think now that all the legalese of all these acquisitions are out the way let's get back to focusing on the games and talking about the game so the game. i'm really excited about it let's get back to the games because we're only halfway through your game pass announcements let's go to january 16th resident evil 2 coming to cloud console and pc that's that sweet remake really really good <laughs> that got me into resident evil because i started with five right and so i went five six seven and then when two came out it was my first time jumping into that well done, well made, super fun, and scary. That's a must play on your Game Pass. So you, you want to hear something funny? Because uh, I know you know a lot of people that watch this know about you know my my pretend rivalry with uh, Brit <laughs> over Resident Evil. So I started playing Resident Evil Four uh, again. I've been sick, so I haven't finished it. But I started playing it in December. It's really good. Really, yes. really good. I, re I really enjoyed it. I, I, I get the appeal of it. I understand why it was in that whole Game of the Year category and all that remake is, is phenomenal. And Britt and I, during the Game Awards, we actually had a conversation about it. Like, like somebody should have filmed it. That, that should have been on camera. Unfortunately, it wasn't. But, uh, you know, Britt, she sure loves her Resident Evil and she sure loves her remakes. So she's the best. I'm sure she's happy. 
Uh, of course, the final one is those who remain will be coming to cloud console and PC. That's your game pass update for the start of the brand new year. Uh, I think they tracked it. Remember last year, Paris, we talked about all the big games that came in through game pass. It's like 5,000 to $9,000 yeah, worth yeah. of, you know, games. So like, Hey, take advantage of it. Use it. Have fun. Uh, maybe we'll hear more coming forward. But, of course, a quick small news story. I talked about it at the top of the show. Pal World drops day one on Game Pass on January 19th. This was the game that was dubbed Pokemon with Guns, the video game. Here's the quick write-up from IGN. In Pal World, players can capture over 100 pals, fight bosses, and build bases. You use your pals to do tasks for you so you can automate entire production lines there's open world survival crafting gameplay and room for up to 32 players so keep an eye on this insane how have they not been sued yet (laughs) yeah (laughs) keep an eye on what is happening right now mike uh i might become the very best at this video game like no one ever was because i gotta catch all 100 of them uh this game we saw a while back it was stunning. It was wild. We all were blown away by it. We had no idea what was happening. I, I don't know how all of a sudden we get the announcement that it's coming out January 19th. We're, it's January 8th right now is recording this. So just wild behavior. But, hey, it's coming to Game Pass day one. Make sure to check that out, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Um, Paris, this is oh. where we say. Oh, tell me. Well, what, one more game. Just talking about Game Pass in 2024. 33 Immortals. Yes. It's another game that's coming yeah. in 2020. It's Co-op Hades. So, yeah. you know, I got to, got to play it last, last June. A lot of fun. So that's another one to look forward to. Yeah, we got to stop forgetting that one because that one's so good. It's right, Paris. I can't wait to check that out with you. Uh, Paris, this is where we're going to end today's show. I know you're under the weather. You fought through it for me. So thank you for bringing the energy. Thank you to everyone watching live as we record this ad free. Thank you for your support with that Patreon membership. Don't forget, you now can become the official Kind of Funny membership on Patreon and on YouTube. If you'd like to support us, get that ad free and get all the bevy of bonus content. Of course, this is Mike. That's Paris. We'll be back next week with episode 170 for more Xbox talk. Thank you so much for keeping it locked with podcast. I almost said unlocked because I love you. Yeah, I know. I was like, where are you going, Mike? (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, everyone. Have a good one.